victim. This is a Be Kind to Pets veterinary educational video. Today we'll be looking at the prospects of becoming a successful vet in Singapore as of 29th January 2015. So the first question is regarding parental concerns. Is it true that a medical doctor will have better job prospects than vets in terms of earning power and income? Well, if you were to look at a GP versus a vet, since they both hold first degrees, I wouldn't say that the job prospects of vets are at a disadvantage, at disadvantage compared to doctors because it all depends on the individual effort and the skill. So if you're more skillful, you'll be able to reel in about the same amount of income as any other doctor. Okay. Is it true that the jobs assigned to scholars during their bonds are not very relevant to their vet medicine? No, it is not true. So depending on the kind of organisation that offered you the scholarship, you will still be practising veterinary medicine, although it may not be on small animals. For example, if you are serving your scholarship bond for EVA, they'll, you'll be working with, um, let's say, laboratory animals. Uh, that, that'll be for ASTAR and if you are serving a bond under, let's say, the turf club, then you'll be working courses. So you'll still get a chance to practice veterinary medicine. Okay. Um, what are the different paths first vet school graduates can venture into? Sorry, can you repeat that? What are the possible... Sorry, give me a moment. <laughs> what are the different paths fresh vet school graduates can venture into? Okay, they can venture into either government or private sectors. Okay. Um, does delaying one's education and studies with regards to vets lower like the opportunities of becoming a successful vet in Singapore? Not at all, because it all depends on the individual effort if you are skillful. Um, you should still be able to establish yourself as a very successful vet. Um, what are the pros and cons of being a self-employed vet? Mm, well, if you establish your own clinic, there will certainly be a lot more things to handle because um, you are managing an entire clinic on your own. It's a lot of financial investment that's involved. Whereas if you are employed by a clinic, there are less things that you have to take care of. All you need to do is just do your job. Mm. Starting, up one, starting up one's clinic is not an easy task. So what can one do to establish a good name of it, uh, for his clinic? Well, first of all, the more if you really wish to reel in more clients and let's put your name out there in the vet scene, it's very important that you try your best to churn out as many um, successful diagnoses and successful stories for all your clients that bring their pets for you to treat. Yeah, that's it. Um, what are the qualities that a good vet should possess? Well, firstly, they'll have to be very skillful in the way they diagnose the animals and give them treatment. Um, secondly, it's important that they have good interpersonal skills to deal with clients. Yeah. And those, that is, those are the basic qualities of a vet, uh, that a vet should have. Okay, so what can I do to build up my resume to become a vet student? Um, a lot of time management has to be put in to plan out what kind of organisations that you would like to help out in to build up on your CV so that you can increase your chances of becoming a vet student. Okay, um, so what do you think would be the most rewarding thing about being a vet? Well, um, although this might sound very cliche, I would say that the most rewarding thing that the most rewarding thing about being a vet would probably be to see the animals go home healthy and seeing that they can go home healthy because you played a part in helping to treat them. Okay, thank you. No problem.